where you get flow in the false lumen. And with the side branches, uh, you can get obstruction of flow to the side branches, causing, a, in this case, a fixed obstruction with the amount of fusion. And so this is, a, this is just an angiogram of a patient with a complicated type B aortic dissection. You can see the angiogram showing flow in the true lumen. This is a large fenestration of communication between the true and false lumens with flow into the false lumen. And then this is treated with a stent graft, where you can see that the flow in the false lumen has been eliminated. And the goal with endovascular therapy is just the closure of the primary tear, uh, with the, the idea being that uh, with treatment and exclusion of the false lumen, we depressurize the false lumen, it promotes thrombosis, and uh, it redirects blood flow towards the true lumen. And it causes a, a so called uh, aortic remodeling with uh, increased uh, thrombosis of the false lumen. In the treated segment as well as at this stage. And this decreases the risk of long term complications. So one of the trials that we're involved with at CEDARS, which is actually we've finished completed enrolling, is a so called stable concept where we use a stent graft for patients with just complicated type B dissections. Where we treat the dissection with a stent graft to exclude flow in the false lumen. And then we use uh, uncovered stents to, to uh, uh, stent open the remaining false lumen to increase the flow in the, I'm sorry, the stent open the true lumen to increase the flow in the true lumen distally and promote thrombosis in the false lumen. And uh, this multi-center trial uh, evaluated the efficacy of the device for this for patients with complicated type B dissections. Um, there were nearly 90 patients in this trial, mean age was 59 years, and uh, mean onset of treatment was uh, 17 days. 64% of the patients were treated in the acute phase. And what they found was in this uh, high risk group of patients, a 30 day mortality was only 4 was less than 5%. And the overall mortality one year was uh, 12% and 15% in two years, compared to an open surgical mortality in this group, which would be in excess of 20% in one year. So, our data at Cedars, we've, uh, we've reported a treatment of uh, 28 patients over eight years from 99 to 2007. And the indications of treatment were rupture in 14%, non perfusion in 25%. The survival of one year was 82%, and five years was uh, nearly 80%. The risk of aorta related mortality was only 10%. And uh, false lumen thrombosis was achieved in 85% of patients. And I think this is probably complicated type of dissection, I think, is the, is the one indication for endovascular therapy where the, the results are far superior to any other therapy uh, available, including open surgical repair. And this is really what you can make. I think the most impact on patients is with uh, complicated opioid sections. Just briefly, also, we're involved in a trial with traumatic aortic injury. Uh, and this is just a, 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 a cartoon depicting uh, different grades of aortic injury. This was described by Dr. Aziz at University of Houston. Uh, these are um, Generally, patients who have uh, deceleration injuries and with blunt injuries to the aorta, this is a grade one injury which just involves intima, and these will generally heal with uh, non operative therapy. And so, these are just treated with observation, anti impulse therapy with blood pressure control. The remaining, this is the intramural hematoma, which is grade two, grade three is a super aneurysm, and grade four is a frank rupture. These are all indications of treatment, and these are treated now with the endovascular stents. And these currently, this is a the yeah, Society of Vascular Surgery established guidelines based on a systematic review of the literature where they noted that the mortality with uh, endovascular repair for aortic injuries was 9% versus uh, nearly 20% for open surgical repair. The risk of spinal cord injury was uh, lower with uh, endovascular repair. Although there was a trend towards increased uh, secondary procedures. So the, the Society of Vascular Surgery based on this rec made a recommendation that endovascular repair be performed preferentially over open surgical repair or non-operative management, regardless of patient age, even though we don't know the long-term durability of these devices, if they have, uh, if they meet anatomic uh, criteria. And this is just an angiogram of a patient we treated recently. You can see with a pseudoaneurysm with a, a pseudo sending the aorta, which was, a, which was treated with a stent and successfully excluded. And finally, I just want to talk about, uh, we have a, a, another device at Cedars, which, is a, which we're using as part of a invest, uh, is an investigational device exemption for type aortic dissection, uh, penetrating ulcers and intramural hematomas. Um, and this is a short uh, uh, 
device in the ascending aorta. You know, the ascending aorta is kind of unique, uh, different to the descending aorta in that the device is uh, exposed to much greater uh, dynamic, hemodynamic forces and changes in the aortic diameter. And so it's uh, very difficult to design a device uh, to um, basically, basically effectively exclude the aneurysm in this part of the aorta um, because of those reasons. Um, the Cleveland Clinic looked at a series of patients with uh, aortic dissections. And, and what they noted was that of those patients, all the patients of all comers that came into their hospital who had CT scans, about 30% of patients with type A dissections they thought could be a base, could be amenable to endovascular repair. Uh, based on the anatomic criteria where the center tubular junction was less than 38 millimeters, the intimal tear was greater than 10 millimeters above the center tubular junction so that you could effectively land a device without compromising the coronary arteries. The other anatomic criteria was that you needed to have this is a landing zone of greater than 10 millimeters proximal to the anatomy artery, and the absence of any significant aortic valve pathology, including tamponade or, or aortic branch malperfusion, which would uh, necessitate open surgical repair. And this is a this was a study which uh, looked at a series of patients. Um, this is from Europe, actually Italy, where uh, they had 28 patients who uh, went to their hospital over a period of three years for acute type A dissections. Uh, they were deemed to be too uh, high risk for open surgical repair. And um, uh, four of them underwent uh, endovascular repair because they met uh, the, an the anatomic criteria through a uh, transfemoral approach. One patient had a carot uh, left carotid to a nominal artery bypass to extend the distal seal zone. They had a 100% technical success rate with 0% mort mortality and, and uh, migration at uh, 15 months follow up. So in, in a select group of patients with ascending aortic aneurysms, the, the standard of care is uh, you know, open surgical therapy, but uh, patients who are prohibitive risk for open repair, um, there are devices which are available which can be used to treat about 30% of patients with aortic dissections uh, effectively. And this is just a, this is a, we've actually, we've uh, treated uh, two patients at Cedars over the past year with uh, High risk uh, ascending aorta pathology. This is a patient who had an intramural hematoma with the ascending aorta. Uh, and we've actually learned from our uh, 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 transcatheter aortic valve experience with our alternative approaches, including a transatrial approach. And we use the transatrial approach in this patient to uh, deploy the device in the ascending aorta. This is a catheter, a balloon uh, placed by, by the transfemoral approach to help align the device along the greater curve to the aorta. Uh, and we were able to use this to effectively uh, exclude a patient who had an intramural hematoma of the ascending aorta. This is the completion of angiogram. So I'd just like to uh, thank you again for the opportunity, Rich, for um, uh, being able to come over here and present some of what we're doing at Cedars. Um, it's a very exciting time to be uh, involved in uh, cardiac surgery and vascular surgery. And uh, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Albert. Uh, uh,